Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. He's the only player in NBA history to take the hardwood over the course of a four calendar wow. decade. Wow. Some call him Vince Carter. But to me, he will always be half man, half amazing. Oh, yes. I recently sat down with the NBA star to discuss his 22 season run and much more. Let's take a look. Jackson hits the deck. Carter runs the floor. And how about those 43 year old legs? How about it? I'm so excited to be sitting here talking with Thanks you today. You're like, you're not like, you're a legend. Okay, so <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm a huge basketball fan and I've been watching you your entire career. Um, so that's a long time. That's man. a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I have to ask, Vince, what is your take down to the the the, the slam dunk contest this year for All Star? It was a, it was it seemed like it was cheating. I think Aaron Gordon had I think he did his thing and it just looked like they was cheating the man. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. How do we put this? <laughs> you know, it was uh, an opportunity I think for the NBA to to do the right thing if you would. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and sometimes we can say what is the right thing? Mm -hmm. Because I think both contestants were great. Mm -hmm. And I think at worst it should have been a tie. Just because, I mean, it, it, it was, I look at it as a, if I'm a judge, I'm sitting back, okay, if you ask me right now, who do you pick? And you have to say, uh, 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 it should be a tie after so many dunks. That's true. And, and I, I don't know what happened in, on, with the judging and the mm -hmm. panel or who missed what. But uh, I think it's now moving forward, it's going to be tough to kind of get that type of dunk contest again as far as stars mm -hmm. or the great dunkers to battle. You may get one, but will you get two or three now? Mm -hmm. It's going to be tough just because of that. Man, so they done messed up, they done messed around th and yeah. tainted the good dunk contest. I, I think so, but I, at, at the same time, you, you never know. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of young talent out there yeah. who didn't, who, who have not been in the dunk contest. Mm -hmm. So maybe. All right, Vince Carter with his first common title round. <laughs> now, you played at the highest level of basketball for four decades, um, which is amazing. Thank you. What, is, what are some of the things that um, you see that have changed in the NBA in a good way and some of the things that you've seen change in the NBA in a negative way? Well, the good way, uh, the game, uh, obviously, more money being made, uh, more opportunity mm -hmm. uh, off the court for, for athletes. Uh, to, to really build on their brand. Yeah. Um, as a player, uh, I, I came in when they're, when the big men were just big men. They played mm -hmm. close to the basket. Mm -hmm. Now, the big men are shooting threes Don't from Don't get distances. me started on these big men. Exactly. <laughs> That's just the way, but it's just the way of the game, and, and it's, it's, you know, they're, they're making a lot of money, it's fun. Now you have a seven foot guy who can shoot as well as a five foot 11, six foot guy now. So it's just, uh, it's just an interesting game. Um, it's for the, the big, slow, heavy, powerful guy that we used to see yeah. in, in, in the, back in my, my early days, mm -hmm. you don't see that anymore. And you yep. won't see that for a while. And it's, it's going to always come full circle, but right now it's just... But why are we not seeing that? And do you think that that's trickling down into AAU, like in high school? Well, and I think the game, the NBA wants the game to be faster. Uh. And playing faster, Everybody talks about pace, pace, pace. That's the word you hear a lot of coaches talk now. So mm -hmm. once the basket made, there's no celebrating. You get the ball in, yeah. you want to see if we can get the ball up within so many seconds. Now it's just all about speed, finesse, high flying, how many points you can score. Yeah. You want to, your averages now are 100 points all a game. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a totally different game. And to add to that now, the negative side to it, we've, we're giving young guys now the opportunity to make a lot of money at an early age mm -hmm. without having to work for it or earn it. And the my only problem with that is the appreciation and will you value it down the line. Because of that opportunity, you tend to forget at some point that next wave comes in who's going to have that opportunity. Now, what do you do? Yeah. Are you prepared for that? The crowd is on its feet and literally pressing forward in anticipation. Yeah. You know, for us, I mean, as a, as a young guy coming in, you had to earn it. I had the opportunity to play immediately. I was in yeah. the running of a rookie of the year immediately. Mm -hmm. I understand that, but I still had to earn it. Yeah. I still had my rookie duties. I had to wake up in the morning and make sure the practice loops were on every guy's door. Yeah. And I was leading in, in, uh, in, in votes for the rookie of the year. It yeah. didn't matter. And when I was, it, when it was, 
the keys were given to me to be the franchise player, mm -hmm. I had appreciation for it and I didn't yeah. want to let go of that. So when that next hungry rookie comes in, like, well, if you're going to get it, you're going you're gonna to have to come get you it. Got to, you because still I was earned working. this. You earned it and then had to work you know, to keep it. Yeah, so, and, and that's just the one thing. So we're, we're trying to just teach these guys how important that is. And, and, and when you value it, you'll put the work in to stay around long yes. enough in the league. And that's been my thing. Wow, Ooh. good stuff. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yes, wow, yes. I cannot wait to see more. So if you're staying with us for the full hour, we've got more of Selena's interview with NBA legend Vince Carter when we return. And, of course, the conversation always continues at Sister Circle TV on all social media platforms. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that laugh, yeah. Yeah. Trina. Oh, my <laughs> oh, my really? Bowling. <laughs> Does that look like when I say because it's balling? No, that's not my thing. No, not balling. It's not. It's not your thing, sis. It's okay, though. Welcome to the Kobe Show. Now, speaking of working hard, one of the hardest working basketball players ever was Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. And um, we're all still very sensitive. Um, <clears throat> and mourning him. Um, but talk to us about what his impact was on the NBA, and, and especially since he was like your AAU teammate and, and good friend, and the mama mentality and what that means to you. Because, I mean, you, you, you're speaking of working hard, and I know that part of the mama mentality was, that was the That was it. That yeah. was and that was him. I, I mean, playing against him, um, you knew it wasn't going to be an off day. You could play against some of the great players, and you're going to battle but he wanted to get the best of you. We can be friends, but he wants, in that conversation later on, you know I dominated you. Right. <laughs> That's kind of, it was his mentality. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to outwork you. He, he wanted to just dominate, start to finish. So uh, it, it was so strange and refreshing, if you would, because knowing his work ethic and how he prepared, how he played, uh, how he loved the game, and the, the approach that he took to the game, was one way, and we was like, man, Kobe boy, like, he doesn't talk to anybody. He doesn't, it's mm. just him, and that's it. And to see the other side, the retired Kobe, how happy he was, how now he's like, I never thought I'd be this happy. And he's, he's even said to wow. me he was happier, just because now he's, he's away from the game, now he gets to be dad, not Kobe Bryant, as we all see yeah. him, and appreciate him for, and now he was kind of really planting the seed for his kids, obviously, for, for mm -hmm. Gianna to become who he built for himself. Yeah. And you can see that in here, just talking with her briefly and just her focus and seeing her ask the questions that she asked or just pointing it out. And when he was talking and pointing and, and breaking the game down to her, she was able to answer those questions. And that's major coming from a guy like that. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, this, he's another one. The, the one thing that I really love about him is that he stayed with his franchise um, throughout his career. And that's tough to do. That's tough to that's do. That's tough to do. That's and, you know, there's do. very few guys, you know, that have played 20 years. And obviously, he, he didn't just play 20 years. He dominated for, for 20 years. And, you know, when you look at a player who switched jerseys and the amount of points he scored were almost identical in mm. either jersey, the consistency and his ability to not only last that long, but still dominate for so long was just unbelievable. Wow. Uh, let's talk about dominating. You've dominated all on the court and you dominate off the court in the community um, with your charity, Embassy of Hope, mm -hmm. the Embassy of Hope Foundation. Mm -hmm. What sense of fulfillment do you get from charity oh. that you don't get from basketball? I mean, because you are still teaching the people when you're down to the court. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's like I, I get the opportunity to teach, especially at this young age mm -hmm. now, that I'm in now. Uh, you know, I've hit my 40s and I, I've seen so much of the game, I've, yeah. you know, I've seen the co guys come and go, uh, I've learned, and now I just try to, to give that knowledge back to these young guys. Yeah. And that's the, the difference between, I don't want to say coaching, but helping out and being a mentor on the court mm -hmm. is a lot different than off the court because now you're, 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 you're teaching the youth, you're trying mm -hmm. to open doors, uh, turn the light on, create mm -hmm. paths mm -hmm. for youth who are trying to figure out how they can become that person they see on TV. Mm. I want to be he, him, her, 
the, the, that group or whatever it is they choose to be, mm -hmm. but not really understanding how to ask those questions or right. what to go research or, mm -hmm. or any of that mm -hmm. nature. So that's the, the satisfaction of kind of sitting there, letting these kids ask the question, giving them some foundation and groundwork and kind of telling my story and they figure out, okay, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, and now you just mold your path mm -hmm. to whatever works for you. And you know, sometimes they just don't see it that way. And right. It takes that somebody who's Someone from the outside to right. kind of just shed light to on that. And that's, yeah, and yeah. I, I really enjoy doing that. And over 20, I've, had, I've done my camp for 22 years now, and every year is like, oh well, I've heard it all, seen it all. Mm -hmm. You know, just another kid that comes in and just wows you with their story, their questions, mm -hmm. um, their concerns. I mean, I've heard some just unbelievable stories of mm -hmm. just kids, you know, younger and younger, having to live on their own mm -hmm. in, that, in their early teens, yeah. but still motivated to become whatever it is they choose to become. Vince Carter, watch again, left side, a big, down big. <laughs> Last question, Vince, what is, if you could talk, go back in time and talk to your younger self, and, and you were the one coming into your own foundation, you were coming to your own camps, and you were a mentor to your young to the younger Vince. What would be the one thing that you would want to that you would have wanted to say to yourself then that would have changed you as a man now? Listen, learn, pay attention, and ask questions. Mm. And on this good note, <laughs> it doesn't get any more simple than no, that. No, <laughs> I mean it's, it really is, and you can kind of base it off of that. You know, you listen to the the, the people like I had veterans on the of it, so just listen, learn what they're telling you. You know, ask questions was mm -hmm. is number one. And I still tell these guys today, you've made it, but you don't have it figured out. This mm. is just, you just cracked the surface of what you want to be. Yeah, you're like, yeah. oh, how'd you play 22 years? Yeah. Because I ask questions. I still ask questions today. Some of the veterans and the people who were my OGs coming in, I still talk to those guys. Mm. I'm now asking them and, and, and seeking them out to help me teach young guys and be that veteran. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when it's tough for me, how to put aside and prepare for retirement. Beautiful. Wow. wow. Great 22 job. 22 years. 22 years. Yeah. Still asking questions. Yes. And what an honor just to be able to sit down with such a legendary athlete. Mm. Yeah. I mean, just across the board, just a legendary athlete who has literally come in and heard and seen it all. Four yes. decades. Yes. My God. Well, Four in, decades. In the wake of the coronavirus pandemic and NBA season suspension, Vince Carter released a statement during a press conference following what could potentially be his last mm. NBA game saying, quote, I'm not one for the whole thing anyway. I'm appreciative, but I just do my time, walk out the door. It's all right with me. I'm cool. <laughs> the game's been good. Yes. We want to thank you, Vince, because you've been good to us. Yes. And the Atlanta yes. Hawks for giving us the time to chat. That's awesome. Yeah. Great job, That's Selena. Great. I know that was good for you. I was yeah. super good. Yeah. Cool. a basketball fan like that. Cool points for KJ. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs>